Hello and welcome to section number six. Our application, from the functional point of view, is getting more and more advanced. Just recently we have coded our search view, allowing us to query our database for recipes. Of course, it does not work because we have no recipes. This whole section will be us trying to fix that issue and allow us adding new recipes to our database. Our settings view contains a button that is expected to show us our recipes. Let's add another one that allows us adding a new recipe. We already have a recipe container and a view for recipes. We also know how to pass parameters from one view to another. Let's make it so that by clicking add new recipe, a stub of a recipe will be created and we will redirect to the food view showing that recipe. Based on what we have learned so far, it shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go. We need a way of creating new recipe and populating it with default data. Let's use the container service for that, as it knows the most about the underlying data structure. We will also need to pass data of a currently logged in user, so that we can already bind the recipe with its author at the moment we are creating it. Our logging service keeps this information in its internal format. We will need to query our container service to find the ID. We can set the value of another field in our recipe entity as well, the date the recipe was created. Let's use the current date. Oh, and let's set up a default title for our recipe too. Once we have added the recipe to our database, we should show it. Let's redirect to a recipe view and let's pass recipe's ID as a parameter. Great! Now we need to make sure that our recipe view, or food view, is capable of reading the parameter and displaying a proper recipe. We shall also make it so that when a recipe is shown to its author, that is, the currently logged in user wrote the recipe, it will show in edit mode. That means that certain components will be different than what originally planned. For example, the title of the recipe, or the instructions, or the ingredients should be editable when shown to the author. Let's move the creating and adding of component to the layout away from the constructor and let's do so when we enter the view. Let's also ignore file uploading just for a moment. We will get back to it in a second. That's a lot of coding again. Let's see if it works. That looks somewhat okay. We can definitely improve the look and feel just by adding captions to the components. 
We are also missing a button to save changes. Let's add it at the same time. OK, it seems to work. Now, what about that file upload? A component that supports file uploads is named, amazingly, Upload. Unfortunately, it's not a field, meaning that we have to do some work in order for the information to be correctly stored in a database. Our entity is expected to store a file name rather than the file directly. Seems that the only choice is to upload a file, store it in some location on the server, and let our entity know about the location of that file through a text field. Sounds like a plan. Before we start coding, let's take a look at the API of an upload component. The constructor accepts a caption and an upload receiver. The latter is what will be notified when the upload starts. A method receiveUpload will be called, and it is expected to return an output stream. So we can safely create a file stream, and our upload component will write contents there. OK, but how do we know about when the upload is finished? Upload component broadcasts a whole bunch of events, one of them at finishing the upload. We could use it to assign the uploaded file name to our entity. For that, let's create a hidden field into which we store the file name. And let's update our entity to have that column as well, because it seems we have missed it. That's it. Let's see if it works. Our upload component is here. And it seems to work. Great. That's an important feature we have added to our application. Uploading files is essentially needed in every web application. Now that we have the file upload done, let's focus on displaying it on screen. Naturally, we would like to see what we have uploaded. That's the topic of the next video. Let's move on.